Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, as I try to educate minds one tailpipe at a time. Thanks very much for taking some time out of your busy schedules to sit and watch my show for a few minutes. Got a lot of OEM stuff to talk about today, so let me get right into the rundown. First story is going to talk about GMC. Now, since its unveiling last year, the vast majority of videos of the GMC Hummer EV in motion have been computer generated, in case you didn't know that, in motion that is. So earlier this month though, GMC released a new video showing the vehicle under its own power in sub-zero temperatures. The all-electric truck was put through its paces on various slippery surfaces, including snow, ice, and steep grades. Seems that this testing was done somewhere here in Ontario, Canada. Yay! The video also provides the reveal date for the SUV version of the Hummer EV. And on April 3rd, 2021, it will be unveiled during the NCAA's Final Four basketball tournament. So stay tuned for that. Switching gears to Porsche. Porsche officially unveiled their next elect electric sports car. Excuse me, the 2022 Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. Like its big brother, the Taycan, the Cross Turismo offers the same performance with a little more versatility. The interior finishes are identical, but the wagon-like design gives passengers more headroom. The extra space also makes the rear seat usable and adds to the cargo capacity of the electric vehicle. Now, performance specs are similar to the Taycan, but the battery in the Cross Turismo was larger at 93.4 kilowatt hours. No EPA range ratings announced yet, but they should be similar to the existing Taycan. Now, the Cross Turismo will also come available with an optional off-road design package, and with all-wheel drive, it can be driving on demanding off-road terrain, according to Porsche. The Cross Turismo will be offered in the same variants as the Taycan. Prices range from about 120,000 Canadian to over 200,000 Canadian, and the car is expected in showrooms later this year. So stay tuned for that. Volvo has revealed a second fully electric model called the C40 Recharge and laid out a concrete plan for the brand's transition to only electric cars. Yay! Announced with the 2022 C40 Recharge reveal, Volvo plans for 50% of its global sales to be fully electric by mid-decade and for every car itself to be fully electric by 2030. And the 2022 Volvo C40 Recharge is based on the same CMA platform as the, C, as the XC40 Recharge and the gasoline XC40. Just like the XC40 Recharge, the C40 Recharge will offer a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack that supports up to 150 kilowatt of CCS fast charging. Volvo is anticipating a 210 mile EPA range for the model, which offers two motors, making a combined 402 horsepower and 486 pound feet of torque. Estimates have a 0 to 60 in about 4.7 seconds, pretty fast. Over the air updates are also included as well, and as a four year, also they include a four year Volvo electric specific care package. The C40 and other future electric cars will be available online only including in the U.S. as part of a new strategy for Volvo to dramatically simplify the ordering and purchase process and pare down dealer inventories. Volvo hasn't yet detailed pricing for the C40 recharge. Now, the XC40 recharge starts at about 55000 or uh, uh, over 47000 after considering the federal rebate in the U.S. of 7500 for which it's eligible. The C40 recharge is the first of several additional electric models on the way. It goes into production alongside the XC40 recharge in Ghent, Belgium. I've been there a few times, a lovely city, in the fall of this year, and it's due to reach U.S. and Canadian customs customers excuse me, in early 2022. Switch to Honda, some good news finally from them, as it's been confirmed recently that they will launch two possibly GM underpinned electric SUVs by 2024. Details regarding the specifics of each model are not provided, but one will wear a Honda badge and the other will be Acura branded. As mentioned, both will be underpinned by a General Motors platform and draw power from Altium batteries. GM will manufacture these for Honda at the Ramos Arispe, Arispe facility in Mexico and in Spring Hill, Tennessee. It is believed that both models will be similar in size and probably mechanically related to the Cadillac Lyric. 
Honda of America sales chief Dave Gardner expressed his view that Honda needs to accelerate its rollout of electric models in order to become carbon neutral by 2050, and they need to adapt to new U.S. President Joe Biden's focus on zero emissions. Wow, what a brainstorm. We can only hope. Staying with OEMs, bringing in Kia, they've now revealed the EV6. It's their first, excuse me, dedicated all-electric car. I love it. Just like the Hyundai Ioniq 5, the Kia EV6 is based on the new dedicated EV platform called their Electric Global Modular Platform, or E-GMP. This allows building EVs with very strong specs, including a long range of up to 500 kilometers or 311 miles, ultra-fast uh, charging uh, capability, uh, so they can replenish like 100 kilometers or 62 miles of range in about four or five minutes, and acceleration of zero to 100 or 62 miles an hour in about three seconds, so super fast. This ex uh, the exact specs of the EV6 model are not yet announced. However, the most powerful EV6 should be uh, seen as packing around 300 horses and utilize the same 73 kilowatt hour battery pack as the Ionic 5. The EV6 should also be offered with a smaller capacity 58 kilowatt hour pack, similar to the Ionic 5, but we'll have to wait and see. The Kia EV6 appears to be a compact sized car with a crossover inspired design. Uh, crossovers are the rage now. If we combine the look of the car and eGMP platform, it seems that it will be a very strong contender in the EV market. Depending on pricing, the EV6 might sell very well. I really hope it does. Now look for Kia to reveal more information about the EV6 soon when it formally unveils this new model, which is expected to hit North American shores late this year or early next year as a 2022 model. No word if this will be a global model, but let's hope. Switching gears to BMW now, the 2022 BMW i4 electric sedan premiered a bit earlier than expected, with the first few exterior photos and even some details released during the company's annual conference in Munich earlier this week. It is the latest model to be introduced under BMW's electrified sub-brand which has produced vehicles like the i3 electric hatchback and the i8 plug-in hybrid sports car. The production i4 styling is very close to the i4 concept shown last year, and that seems to be a trend now where what we're seeing in concepts becomes almost a full reality. Now, while details again are scarce, BMW promises up to 300 miles, 510 kilometers or so of range. On the EPA cycle, power will be up to 523 horsepower and 0 to 60 in about 4 seconds for the quickest model. BMW has promised to release more details over the coming weeks ahead of the car's on-sale date late this year as a 2022 model. I have to wait and see. Now, a company I haven't talked to much before is a company called Canoe. I've been following them, but they've just come out with this great story that they've now revealed plans for an all-electric pickup truck to hit the market in 2023. Of course, you folks know that's a hot, hot market, so this is going to do quite well, I think. They will offer an extended cab version that is designed for two people and have an extendable bed and other innovative features. The Canoe electric pickup truck will be about 184 inches, 4.67 meters long, 78 inches, uh, just under 2 meters wide, and 76 inches, about a buck 92 meters tall, and will have about a 112 inch wheelbase, 2.85 uh, meters. That means it is much, much smaller than most pickup trucks sold in the U.S. The Honda Ridgeline, for example, is about 210 uh, inches or about uh, 5.33 meters long. Now, the Ford Ranger size of truck comes to mind for me when I look at this, and the company didn't mention its ground clearance, but the pickup truck will be using 260-60 R18 tires. Now, no firm specs on battery sizes and ranges, however, it's expected to offer more than 200 miles or 321 kilometers of range with probably a 60 or 80 kilowatt hour battery pack since Canoe is offering these sizes in their other vehicles. Some other info that has been released include the offering of rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive configurations with up to 600 horsepower, 447 kilowatts of power, and 550 pound-feet or 746 newton meters of torque with the dual motor option. Payload capacity will be about 1,800 pounds and the truck bed is four by six feet, but with this built-in extension that you've seen, it can add another two feet, providing the capability to carry a four by eight sheet of plywood or drywall or whatever. 
the vehicles will also be able to tow up to 3,500 pounds. Now there are all sorts of other cool storage and compartment features as you can see by the video and pics, which will make this a good offering for fun and even potentially fleet applications. Now no mention of pricing yet or the name of this electric pickup truck. However, it is to enter production in later 2022 with delivery starting in 2023. A full launch is scheduled for some time in Q2 of next year with pre-orders commencing then as well. Now, I like this design, folks, and the versatility this brings to what will be, as I mentioned, a very hot market segment. As long as Canoe can keep the pricing competitive, they should have a good seller on their hands. Not done yet, folks. I'm staying with pickup trucks, talking about something uh, with this segment. Another new player has entered the game called Alpha Motor Corporation. Not Moonbase Alpha. You know what show that's from, but Alpha Motor. An EV startup based in California, of course, and they've revealed what they call their Wolf electric pickup truck. Now, this is the company's third EV in line with the Ace Coupe and the Jax CUV that have already been unveiled. I never heard of them until now. Like, uh, unlike many of the upcoming entries into the all-electric pickup truck market, the Alpha Wolf is going to be uh, very price competitive, as the MSRP will start at $36,000 US. And that's without any tax incentives added on yet. Now, another, it's a, again, similar to the canoe, it's another two-seater vehicle. The Wolf comes in a single motor front wheel drive or dual motor all wheel drive. Okay, great. Um, Alpha Motors claims a driving range of 250 to 275 miles. So anywhere from, you know, 400 and plus kilometers and a towing capacity of over three or up to 3,000 pounds. Now, hauling capacity isn't advertised, but the bed is about five and a half feet in length, which is about the same as most crew cab trucks. But there's also a front trunk in this one or a frunk. Zero to 60 miles an hour or zero to just under 100 kilometers is estimated about 6.2 seconds. So it's not going to be a rocket, but that's still plenty fast. And it seems Alpha hasn't settled on a battery pack size yet for the Wolf, uh, or doesn't want to disclose at least the size yet, but it should be between 75 and 85 kilowatt hours. Again, people are estimating. Charging speed isn't stated, but they do say that it has rapid charger, so and it has battery cooling and thermal heating systems and all that good stuff as well to take care of the batteries. Now, this is an interesting truck as it has the looks of an 80s or 90s small truck, kind of like a Nissan hard body, if you remember the, the Datsun 720s of the world, or like a Toyota Tacoma. Think of Back to the Future, Marty McFly's truck. It comes with most of the off-road aftermarket items that truck owners like, and can be equipped with a premium high-tech looking interior. Now, not to mention the fact that it's also all electric, which uh, I love, and the Alpha Wolf looks like a custom-built truck without the outrageous price. We'll have to see about that. Now, no details on production timeframes or numbers. However, I think that they will do well in this niche if they can keep the pricing down and get some quantities out there. It's a longer show than uh, usual, folks. A lot of good stories, but this is my last story, and it's about Nimbus. Some people love motorcycles, but avoid them because of safety and comfort. Now, like me, some love cars, but see no point in driving one-ton machines to work every day on their own, which is a lot of people. This is what Nimbus plans to solve with their product, the Halo. This little machine promises to be as rational as a motorcycle to use, as safe and convenient as a car, and as clean as any other EV around. This three-wheeled machine tilts when it drives, and the Halo has a top speed of 50 miles an hour, or about 80 kilometers per hour. It will drive more like a car with the aid of a balancing system. It has a steering wheel and safety features like three airbags, side impact bars, automated emergency braking, ABS, um, traction control, and lane departure warning. And it will even come with heating, I hope so, and air conditioning will be an option. Now this all electric vehicle will be offered with two battery options, an 8.1 kilowatt hour providing a range of 78 miles or 126 kilometers, or a 12.4 kilowatt uh, battery pack offering 119 miles or 191 kilometers. That's really good. Now when it comes to pricing, Nimbus said the Halo will cost $6,420 US, but customers will also have the option to rent one for as low as 99 bucks a month. You know, I've looked at this. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I'd get one, but it's a very interesting idea, similar to the offering by the Electromechanica with their solo product that you've seen me talk about before. 
small car-like all-electric transportation, great for urban commuting applications. Of course, look how the micro EVs that I talked about uh, in China are doing. I'll have to keep watching how this particular product takes off. And, you know, I think it could be a great option to increase mass EV adoption, especially with that kind of range and price point. All right, I'm out of breath here, folks. That's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Man, I had lots of stuff to catch up on, lots of things going on in the OEM. Thank everybody for watching on YouTube, for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do click that button. You can also click the bell, get notified of new episodes, all that stuff. You guys know all this. Thumbs up if you like it. Give me some comments. I love reading your comments. Please uh, let me know your thoughts on some of this stuff. Uh, it's really good. Of course, always humble thanks to my Patreon supporters. Yay, you guys know, you guys and gals, know who you are. Thank you very much for your support. It's always dearly appreciated. If you're interested, you can check the link down below if you want to find out more about supporting me on Patreon. Of course, everybody stay safe. I've got to continue with my PSA. We're getting there, folks. We're winding up with vaccines. It's happening. You know, the guy, you guys in the U.S. are just going nuts now with this vaccine. Good for you. Stay safe. Follow public health guidelines. We're almost there. And continue to watch the EV space. There's tons of stuff going on. There's so much news that I can't keep up. I have to, you know, I have to find 10 people to start helping me with news stories if I can. There's so much going on. But really, folks, I do appreciate you watching, taking the time out of your lives to spend a few minutes with me and the EV Revolution show as I educate minds one tailpipe at a time. And until the next show, please stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye. Thank you.